Come on, man. This is Come on. You know it. Just leave me alone. Okay, man. You know this is Just leave me the alone. I'm not doing nothing. Can I call him? Huh? Okay. What am I going to do that for? Oh, nice smell. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you. What a piece of Have garbage. A day. How are you? Where are you from? How are you? I'm deputy. Good. Where are, you, where are you filming? Just filming for what? Sir? Where are you filming for? It's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah. Go on your way, bud. Do you have jurisdiction outside of that building? Are you a deputy? Sir, I got jurisdiction over there. In this situation, a man is recording a traffic stop when one of the officers at the scene comes up to him and asks if he needs anything. The man responds by stating that he doesn't need any assistance and firmly tells the officer that he's no longer needed, indicating that he wants to be left alone to continue his filming. Strangely, this seems to provoke a negative reaction from the officer, which becomes even more apparent when the man records the officer's patrol vehicle and is met with a barrage of senseless yelling and shouting in response. No. Nope, you're dismissed. Dismissed? Yep. Actually, that's not how it works, but... Am I committing a crime? No, but I'd like to know if you need I'd like to not answer your questions. You're dismissed. Why are you taking Because I'm allowed to film in public. You are allowed to film in public. Cool. You're dismissed. I'm just making sure that you need it, though. I don't need anything for you. Okay. Well, just do us a favor. Don't interfere with our investigation. I'm not interfering. You don't need to tell me that. You're nice. I appreciate you. Cool. You're dismissed. While the situation unfolds, the man who is recording the encounter informs the officer that he is maintaining a safe distance from the scene and has the right to record anything in his surroundings. Surprisingly, the officer shamelessly accuses the man of attempting to liberate a detained individual from inside the patrol vehicle. It appears that the officer's emotions have been deeply wounded, leading him to seek revenge in any way he can. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm not doing anything wrong, man. You can't just walk up on a I can absolutely. I know the law better than you, don't I? Interesting. I'm 10 feet away. I'm 10. You were close. What law am I breaking? I don't know you. Tell me what law I'm breaking, officer. In an obvious effort to make matters worse, the officer walks up to the man and persistently accuses him of aiding a detained individual in escaping from the patrol vehicle. It's clear to everyone that this accusation is completely unfounded, but the officer seems determined to use it as a way to justify his intense emotions. In response, the man calmly informs the officer that he plans to file a complaint against him. Undeterred, the officer confidently encourages him to do so, asserting that he hasn't broken any laws and hasn't violated the man's rights. Coming to let this dude out of the car? Can you tell me what law I'm Are breaking? You coming to let this dude out of the car? I don't have to answer your because questions. What it look like. I don't have to answer you your questions. Right up to that car. This is textbook, dude. I don't have to answer your questions. You're just educating my, my, my friends here. That's all. You can educate all you want, but what you can't do is you can't interfere with our investigation. Okay. That's what I'm going to tell you. If you liked the video, I would like you against the wall because I'm gonna let you know right now. Here's good. To right here. Here's fine. And this is where my prisoners. You want to see him? Here here's he is. In the midst of the encounter, the man boldly asks the officer which laws he had violated. As anticipated, this leaves the officer momentarily at a loss for words before abruptly changing the subject and returning to his patrol vehicle. This incident clearly demonstrates that the officer had no legitimate grounds to engage in conversation with the man who was filming. The officer's ego was simply bruised by the fact that a civilian had the audacity to dismiss him, a situation that power-hungry police officers are not accustomed to. In the first encounter, a driver noticed that an officer was following him for miles after he left a gas station. It was evident from the beginning that the officer had no valid reason to pull the driver over. The officer didn't use his emergency lights or show any signs of initiating a traffic stop. It seemed like the officer was searching for a reason to accuse the driver of something. Despite this, the driver asked the passenger to start recording the interaction for safety and pulled over to the side of the road to find out what the officer wanted. In the video, the driver emphasized that he had been obeying all traffic laws during his journey. Interestingly, as soon as the driver pulled over, the officer suddenly turned on his emergency lights and officially initiated a traffic stop. Oh, that.
So I went to the gas station because I had to go get a couple things. I've been using my turn signals. Plus, I've been doing the speed limit. There's two cops sitting on the side of the road. This cop has been following me for like four or five miles now. Everywhere I go, he keeps following me. So I'm gonna get our final one. The problem is. So we turn his lights on as soon as we pulled up here. So I just took my seatbelt off. The officer then approaches the driver and starts talking to him. However, the driver immediately questions the officer and asks why he was pulled over. When the officer is asked this, it seems like he doesn't have a valid answer and remains silent for a while. Eventually, he says he would explain, but only if the driver identified himself. As expected, the driver refuses to provide any documents to the officer and makes it clear that he wants to know the reason for the stop. In addition, the driver mentions that he's a constitutionalist, indicating that he knows his rights as a U.S. citizen and is familiar with the law. What's the nature of the stop? As soon as I know who you are, I'll be happy to explain that. Is this Nazi Germany? Do I gotta provide papers before you tell me why? Well, if I don't know who I'm talking to, in case you run off or flee, I'd like to know who I'm talking to. So if you don't mind providing your identification, I'd be happy to get it. Well, I would take the key out if I could, but I can't. Okay, no problem. I would still like to know why I'm being stopped. Are we in Nazi Germany? No, we're not. I think you know the answer to that question. Okay. I don't think Nazi Germany exists anymore. Exactly my point. You do realize in order to get ID from somebody, you have to have a reason and articulate that reason for the stop, right? I'm well aware of how it works. <laughs> well, you do, you do realize I'm a constitutionalist, so I know this okay. So, unless you can you articulate, this is my property, this yes. Property. Well, I don't live here, but this is my property. This is, what you're saying. This is not where I'm staying, but I own this property. Oh. And I knew you were following me. I knew I used my turn signals. I knew I wasn't speeding. As soon as I see you on the side of the road, I see you hit your brake lights. I knew you're gonna f with me. I knew exactly what you were gonna do. There's nothing wrong with my car. Every light on my car works. Now that the officer realizes that this man is knowledgeable about the law and his rights, he understands that he can't misuse his authority in this situation. So what does he do next? Well. He fabricates a ridiculous reason for the traffic stop by claiming that it seemed like the driver's vehicle didn't have a front bumper, which was completely untrue. The officer then pretends to inspect if the driver's vehicle is roadworthy, and the driver quickly catches on to his absurd tactics. The driver requests the officer to call his supervisor while laughing in disbelief. Eventually, though, the officer admits to his foolish behavior and agrees that the driver didn't do anything wrong at all. Now, let's discuss the next encounter. In this situation, a man who is simply a passenger in a vehicle is asked by the officer to present his driver's license, which doesn't make any sense since he is not the one driving. Understandably, the passenger questions the officer about the need for his license in the first place. Astonishingly, the officer tries to justify her unjustifiable request by claiming that there is something that came up and she now needs to check for it using the passenger's license. However, the passenger, named Ripley, rightfully refuses to provide any documentation to the officer. Consequently, the officer walks away, showing signs of being bothered or offended by the passenger's refusal. So I'm the passenger in the vehicle, and you're asking for my license? I'm asking for your license, yes. And I'm the passenger in the vehicle? Yes. Because, I'm sorry, why, again? No, she said something came up. What'd you say? No, so you said something came up, you said. Yeah, something came up. I need to check something. Are you refusing? 
Yes, I am, because I'm not the driver, so I'm confused. Another officer arrives at the scene and approaches the passenger. Fortunately, this officer proves to be quick thinking and effectively explains the situation in a clear and understandable manner. He informs the passenger that the female officer mistakenly identified his uncle, who was driving the vehicle, as a wanted criminal. The second officer was called to the scene to investigate, but quickly realized that there had been a mix-up. The passenger, understandably curious, asks how he is involved in this situation. In response, the officer shrugs and honestly admits that he is not entirely sure, as he just arrived at the scene a few moments ago. It's a rather bizarre series of events, but at least there is an officer present who is capable of making sense of the situation. How you doing, man? Doing right. How you doing? Yeah. So I'm, I'm so he she, he got pulled over okay. for tinted windows, right? Oh, don't spin too loud, I have a family just like you have a family. So he got pulled over for tinted windows. Your officer told me she came to the passenger door and said, "Give me your ID. I need your ID and your license, your identification." I said, "Why?" She said, "All of a sudden, something came up." What does that mean? Okay, so I'm, I'm going to so be... You had a call, I'm not going to tell you a story. Come on, Obviously, I wasn't here when the initial got pulled over. Dre, you loud. Reason, Don't be too loud. The, the reason why I got called to the scene is yeah. because your, your father, this is your father. It's my uncle. Your uncle. So when my partner ran your uncle's name, right? Uh -huh. Sometimes our computer will give us a generic you know warrant Hollywood, result you know if a name is similar to any computer system. Right? So when she initially ran his driver's license, she got a hit saying that he is a wanted side, person so by the New York City Police no Department. Came so came so I came over, I looked at the computer screen, on, verified it's not the same person. The name is very similar, but the data... What does that have to do with the passenger? Again, I wasn't here when you initially got pulled over. Since the second officer essentially indicated that the female officer made an error, the passenger directs his attention to the female officer to ensure she comprehends her mistake. However, the female officer persists in her authoritative stance and asserts that she has the authority to demand documentation from anyone based on her personal preference. Eventually, she gives up and shamelessly walks away when it becomes abundantly clear that her actions were unlawful. Your officer is letting me know that you were wrong. Okay. You understand that you were wrong, right? But you know your officer explained that you were wrong. You understand that, or you don't? Well, I'm not wrong. I'm okay. To your license and you're allowed to refuse. You're right. Have a good day. So yeah. we're done here. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. In this encounter, an individual driving on the freeway notices a patrol vehicle tailgating them for several minutes. Suddenly, the patrol vehicle speeds past their car changing lanes without signaling. Troubled by this behavior, the individual decides to follow the patrol vehicle and captures the officer's reckless driving on their dash cam. They want to hold the officer accountable for breaking the very laws they are supposed to enforce. The pursuit leads them to a gas station where the individual uses their phone to record the ensuing confrontation. During the confrontation, the individual questions the officer about their dangerous driving. The officer responds with a weak excuse claiming they were responding to a call that was later canceled. However, the individual sees through the excuse and points out that the officer stopped at every red light, indicating that there was no urgent call. They inform the officer that they will review the records to verify the truthfulness of the officer's claim. In response, the officer confidently tells them to proceed and rolls up the window, signaling the end of the conversation. How's it going, brother? Hey, uh, why were you in such a rush just now? You were racing down 441 there. I was behind you for most of the time, and then you lost me, and we both got caught up at the same red light. So I was on my way to a call, and then the call got canceled. It did? Yeah. So you stopped at all those red lights on your way to a call? Yeah. So if I pull the records, there was a call? Go pull. I will. Okay. What's your name? Sir. Trooper Hannon, H A N N O N. All right, I've Have never had a problem with you guys in four years. Good. You've always been super professional. Yep. Nobody's ever lied to me until today. Okay. Have a good day, sir. You're a liar, Hannon. Thank you. Slow down. Okay. If you're going to enforce the law Have and be day, the sir. best of us, Thank you. do the best. Afterward, the auditor repeatedly calls out to the officer, but his attempts are ignored. Frustrated, the auditor knocks on the patrol vehicle to get the officer's attention. 
In an alarming turn of events, the officer forcefully opens the door, narrowly missing the auditor, and steps out in what appears to be an attempt to intimidate the auditor. However, the auditor remains composed and continues recording, holding the officer accountable for his unlawful behavior. The auditor requests the officer to contact his supervisor, but the officer stubbornly insists that he will not call his supervisor, regardless of the situation. Hey, Hannon. Hey, Hannon. Hannon. Get your supervisor here. Yeah, thank you. I want to call your supervisor now, please. Go ahead, call him. Thank you. Why are you rolling up on me? You think that intimidation is going to work? Like I said, I've done this for about four years. It doesn't work. What's your problem? It's that you were speeding, and you okay. have no accountability. You could have said, hey, I'm sorry. And I could have let you off with a warning, let like I was, I was planning on doing. Good job, man. Good job what? Did you call your supervisor like I asked? No. Will you? No. You're not going to call him, Hannah? Absolutely not. Man. Get that flag off that uniform. You're making it look like crap. After the officer goes back to his patrol vehicle, the auditor informs him that he intends to file a complaint if the officer continues to refuse to contact his supervisor. In response, the officer dismissively tells the auditor to go ahead and file the complaint, demonstrating his arrogance and belief that he is immune to the consequences of his actions. Adding to the already unfortunate situation, the officer concludes their conversation with offensive language before driving away. You're not calling your supervisor? How are you, ma'am? Good, how are you? Good. Don't even try to solicit a trespass. Just call your supervisor like I ordered you to. Yeah. How you guys? This yeah, behavior is not going to go today. uncorrected. Okay. It's a warm today. It is, right? It's human. Yeah. One of your fellow troopers, he gave me a warning when I was speeding on that same road. Have a good day. And that's what I would have let you go with, too. Either get your supervisor or get a complaint on your record. You gonna call him? Huh? Okay. What am I gonna do that for? Thank you. Oh, nice mouth. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate you. What a piece of Have garbage. A good day. Now, let's talk about another astonishing encounter. In this unbelievable incident, a deputy decides to hassle a man who is simply standing on a public sidewalk, going about his own business, and legally recording his surroundings. The deputy pulls up and immediately starts interrogating the man about his reasons for filming. When the man rightfully refuses to respond to the pointless questions, the deputy escalates the situation by unlawfully ordering him to leave the area. Shockingly, it doesn't end there. The deputy boldly claims that he has authority throughout the entire county, as if he can exert his power anywhere. It's an appalling abuse of authority that will undoubtedly leave you astounded. Oh, yeah. Who are you? Where are you from? Who are you? The deputy. Good. Where are, you, where are you filming? Just filming for what? Sir? What are you filming for? It's a nice day, isn't it? Yeah. Go on your way, bud. Do you have jurisdiction outside of that building? Are you a deputy? Sir, sir I got jurisdiction over there. At this stage, it becomes painfully clear that the deputy has no intention of calming the situation. Without any valid reason, he unnecessarily antagonizes the innocent man, making things even worse. Astonishingly, the deputy goes on to claim ownership of the county jail building behind him, as if it were his personal property. It's hard to believe, but he boldly insists on this false assertion. It's a clear display of a power trip, demonstrating his abuse of authority. Thankfully, the man who is recording the incident promptly reminds the deputy that the true owners of the building are the taxpayers, not the deputy. Regardless, the deputy stubbornly refuses to identify himself and unlawfully demands the man's ID, further adding to his misconduct. Unidentify yourself? You got any ID? You want to identify yourself? Sure. You, you, have an you approached me. I didn't approach you. You take a picture of my facility. That's what I'm asking. Are you Benny and Napoleon? His name's on there. Sir. That's what I'm asking. Do you have an identification? Did you take Do I need ID? 
You do not need, you know, need ID. I'm asking around. I do need ID, huh? That's what you're telling me? Go. 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 I'm just on a public side. Well, I understand not doing anything that, but you're not taking pictures of my building. I'm just getting some shade here. It's a cool spot sure, right go. here. You ain't taking pictures of my building. Go. Do you believe in the Constitution and the First Amendment? I sure do. Did you did you do anything to support it? Despite being on public property, the deputy stubbornly continues to insist that the man should vacate the area, even suggesting that he should go for a bike ride. When the man inquires about where he should go, the deputy dismissively responds with a disrespectful and ignorant wherever, before walking away and vanishing back into the county jail building. In the end, the deputy's attempt to exert his authority and abuse his power proved to be futile and unsuccessful. Sir? Go. Go. Go for a bike ride. Oh, so now you tell me how to get my exercise. Sir. Go. Let's go. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go, bud. Where would you like me to go? Wherever. Just don't take pictures of our building. Come on. Let's go. Alright? Have a good day. You have yourself a good day. Come here, buddy. You're making up stuff. Oh, yeah. All you cops say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. There goes the walk of shame, guys.